Welcome back, troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Troglies Guitar Show. Today, we're going to talk about one of the coolest student model Gibsons that has ever been created. This thing was first birthed in the year 2007, and the initial run lasted until 2008. And while it would be very easy to confuse this guitar with a book written by Raw Dahl, this is the BFG. Alright, so the BFG, it stands for Barely Finished Guitar. Why? Because it's barely finished. At first glance, you just might think, whoa, really cool, reptile skin Les Paul. But no, the initial run of these did not have exotic colors necessarily. They looked like these. Offered in transparent cherry, trans black, and trans gold. Just like this one, they were very stripped down Les Paul Studios, essentially. Normally, P90s, they get a cover on them. These don't have a cover. They're just drilled directly into the body. Same thing with our humbucker here. We do not have any type of a ring on here. It's just drilled directly into there. There's no binding on these things, not on the body, not even on the fretboard. And the maple top on these, despite looking kind of cool the way it is right now, that's just due to them not fully sanding it down flush to get that whole belly carve. Apparently most maple tops end up looking like this before they finish it. I've never fully understood that about the BFGs to be honest, but I always think it looks cool, especially on this limited edition finish called Gator Green, because it works so incredibly well. But like these things didn't even have truss rod cover stock from the factory. I mean, barely finished meant barely finished. Another thing besides being barely finished is the fact that they have unique controls. You have wooden knobs on these things, which we'll look at on the workbench, but you've got your toggle switch down here and then another toggle switch right here. This one's a kill switch, you know, stock from the factory. It just kind of made those things cool. So that's a two position and then a three one. These were just light satin finishes. So if you get one that's been played, generally you'll have buffed up areas. They'll almost be glossy at this point. But satin finishes make for great players. They had 50s rounded neck profiles and their mahogany bodies featured chambered weight relief. The initial model year was 2007 and lasted till 2008. Now you will find some that have the serial number of 2006, but you gotta remember that was back when Gibson was doing the whole new car thing. From the initial run, the rarest color is called ink blue. Supposedly they had only made 200 of those. Now, after the initial run in 2009, Gibson decided to ramp these things up, still do the whole BFG vibe, but do signatures. So you have some dealer exclusive finishes like the natural one that Sweetwater offered. That thing's pretty cool looking. But what I'm really talking about here are the Zach Wild models. You have a Bullseye BFG and a Buzzsaw Graphics one. Now those things were kind of expensive. MSRP was $3,331 on that Buzzsaw. But then another popular one out of that series is the BFG Gary Moore edition. It's kind of got that orange burst finish, you know, going after greeny vibes and whatnot. But after those ran their course for about a year, year and a half, the BFG kind of disappeared for a couple of years until the year 2011. That's when a few other colors came out, like the one that we're talking about today, Gator Green. Now, something to know about these later made ones, though, is you have to remember the period of time of Gibson history you're in. Even though the spec sheets say online that these things have rosewood fretboards, I can guarantee you this one at least has baked maple because this is when that whole governmental raid thing was going on. Rosewood became scarce. Ebony became pretty much completely unavailable, but I've seen enough baked maple on my bucket head lust paws to know that, yeah, this is definitely baked maple. But besides those cool finishes, there was also a tremolo model version that was offered at $1,849. I was able to find that on Gibson's website through the archives. So at the end of the Henry J era, in like a last ditch effort to get something to be super popular and sell, they reissued these things again. However, they took away the most important part of a BFG in my opinion. You've got the P90 in the neck and a humbucker in the bridge. It's this P90 humbucker combination that makes the BFG so unique on top of it just being a barely finished guitar. These are such great rock and roll machines. They've got great tone. So the 2018 said, hey, instead of being like that, how about we just do either or? So you can get a P90 variation or a humbucker version. The general buying public did not like that too much. I remember those things getting blown out as like cheap as like 550, 600. But now if you look on the used market, they're up to like 1200, something crazy. Depends on when you're watching this video. So not well received at first, but gaining appreciation since they're no longer available. So that's the BFG series in a nutshell. 
essentially a stripped down Les Paul that they just kind of struck gold with. These have become cult classics, especially the rare signature editions and custom colors. So Gator Green, I like green and black, so I've always loved this guitar. I had owned one once before, but somebody had modified it. It was very popular for people to modify these things because they were relatively inexpensive. People would add the plastics over the pickups, add pickup rings. Some people would even go as far as like finishing these. I remember seeing a lot of internet forum threads on that where somebody would sand it down flush, put binding on it, basically turn it into a standard. Because what's great is you don't even have any inlays on any of these things, so it's really easy to convert it to whatever inlay system that you do want. Custom blocks, trapezoid inlays, you don't have to worry about that whole double dot fret thing. And I mean, these things are just incredibly cool. And that's why this one's part of my personal collection. And I'm not going to sell it because it's pretty clean for its age. It wasn't played too much. And Gator Green's got matching green headstock. So kind of widowed like vibes, but not really because they're just green decals. So to learn more about this particular one, let's go ahead and throw it on the workbench to take a look at its parts and specs. Inside the Gator Green BFG, I actually found a few things that I didn't know about these. So let's start with our neck pickup here. It's a P90. You can see it's actually quite scratched up. I don't know if that's from playing or if that's just how it came from the factory. Probably a combination of both would be my guess. But there's no markings on the back, as is typical with many Gibson P90s. And here's what that cavity looks like. It looks like it says, good game, GG for Gator Green right there. But you're going to see four different holes in here. And that's because this P90 uses a base plate that looks like this. So two of those holes are for mounting this to the body, which are these two. And then these two holes within the body that you can see right there are for these mounting screws. That secures it to the guitar by threading those screws through this plate. But what's interesting here is not only do they use foam in the center, they also have springs around each screw. So you've got the two most popular ways of helping stabilize your P90s present in these guys. But what I find really creepy is look at this. I thought it was just the top that they didn't completely flush sand to be super smooth, but no, it's also the cavities themselves. They have a ridge to them. Listen to this. That's kind of cool to see. As you can see your maple cap right there and then the start of the mahogany body. So this is just Gibson's regular P90, nothing fancy. But our humbucker does have a title to it. It is the Burst Bucker 3. This one was wound in early 2012. But normally a humbucker has a pickup ring around it, right? But this one, I thought they drilled it directly into the wood. They don't. They actually have a mounting plate just like the P90, where those two screws secure the plate to the guitar itself, and then they have the threaded inserts right here on this where the height adjustment screws and springs go to, of which you can see those here. So that was something new that I learned about these. And right in here in red lettering, LPBFG, big friendly guitar. That's what I'll always call it anyways. But here you can see that same phenomenon. So we know it wasn't just like the neck pickup cavity was routed weird. That is indeed a spec that makes these cavities interesting. So now let's talk pickup readings. Our bridge pickup reads 8.33k ohms. Our neck position, which is the P90, 7.85. So it's pretty balanced in that aspect. And for fun, the middle position here is 4.05k ohms around there. So you're going to notice that these knobs are actually a different size from each other. Two are small, about two centimeters across. And then the other one's about three and a half centimeters. What's interesting about these wooden knobs though, besides just being wooden knobs, is they actually have a little rubber gripper around them to kind of help you grab onto them. Now unfortunately, as these things have been aging, at least on the small ones, you can actually see that rubber gripper is starting to deteriorate after about 10 years, so I don't think we have too much longer of BFG rings actually still being intact. They're going to just flake off eventually. However, maybe they use different materials on the big one, because I only see one crack on that one right there. But BFG knobs are cool. You used to be able to get 120 bucks a set on these things because people liked them so much and they wanted to put them on other guitars. But nowadays you see them in the Gibson mod collection quite often on other ones because I think they're trying to use up old inventory. And as far as our kill switch here, the up position is on, down is off. I can see why so many people took this out of this guitar because I feel like it should be the other way around. On is what I consider an on position, because you're just gonna accidentally hit that. No wonder so many people removed it. And that's probably why the 2018 version of the BFG did not actually get the kill switch. They just gave it a regular control layout. Now you could modify it to have this layout because they put the toggle switch up here and just gave you four pots. So if you bought a kill switch, you could do it. 
Now let's check out our bridge and tailpiece system. Nothing too fancy here, just a Nashville style with a regular stop bar. It is black though, so I guess that's a special one. This one's Advanced Plating Incorporated PW, and the tailpiece is full weight, also Advanced Plating branded. Since this example is so clean, I really want to take some time to, you know, document how this is. You see these rough areas right here? That's just due to them not sanding it nice and flush. I mean, it's not necessarily just this whole reptile skin phenomenon that they've got going on. It's just some of these will look better than others. I guess it depends how raw you want it to look and how crazy you want it to look. The other thing with gator green finish is some of these are incredibly dark and some of them are a little bit lighter. I've always been more attracted to the light green ones so that's why I was really happy when I found this because some of them are so dark you can't tell the difference between a black one and a green one but you want to know how rushed these things are the neck pocket was not routed correctly on this guitar there's actually a pretty sizable gap right there that you can fit your nail into I didn't notice it until I was cleaning this because my paper towels were getting stuck I'd be curious if anybody else has a BFG if they also have that same ridge right there if it's the aesthetic of it these are essentially a grade below a Les Paul Studio, so let's see, it measures about 1.8 inches, so that's about what a Studio does. But now moving on from our chambered mahogany body with a maple top, we move on to our mahogany neck, and most of these will be a rosewood fretboard. This one, as we were talking earlier, is 100% without a doubt baked maple. I would recognize that wood grain and feel anywhere. Baked maple has a really nice velvety smooth feel to it. I love it. Like if I ever got a signature Gibson, I would consider putting baked maple on it. Not that I really deserve one just for reviewing guitars, but I would like to see Gibson bring it back because I think it's underrated. But this one was made in 2012. So I'm sure the earlier 2011s very well might still have the rosewood. So if that's what you really want, it's probably out there too in the gator green finish. But we've got 22 medium jumbo frets, 24 and three quarter inch scale length, standard 12 inch fretboard radius with a nut width of 1.69 inches, which increases to 2.08 by the 12th. First fret neck depth, 0.85, then almost one inch by the 12th. Here it is at the first fret and the 12th fret. Very rounded neck, but not overly chunky. When the spec sheets call these things 50s rounded necks, they just mean that they're rounded, not necessarily huge baseball bats. Those aren't green inlays on the side, that's just the green finish running over the white markers. That's just something that makes Gator Green extra cool. It's kind of like what we've got up here on the headstock with our green Gibson decals. And these are a little bit factory worn, just to match the whole aesthetic of these. Looks like our truss rod is in great shape on this one. We've got those matching black Grover tuners. Gator Green was one of the BFGs that actually came stock with a truss rod cover though. But before we swap on over to the backside, you can't actually see the maple top on the edge right here. Normally we call it thin binding in the cutaway, but this being a more studio guitar, since this is a slightly lighter green colored one, we actually can see the maple cap right there and along the edges. So if you found a more beat up one, you could just lightly sand the edge of that to kind of make a natural faux binding. PRS is pretty famous for doing stuff like that. But this really helps show off that satin stain finish. Now to give off the illusion that, hey, it's an unfinished guitar, they wanted you to be able to see the electronics. So they have these clear back plates over them, including back here. I remember there used to be want to buy threads about these things. For some reason, people like the clear back plates. But I'm kind of sad to see that these cavities are actually all nice and clear. They're not all rigid like we were seeing in the pickup cavities. However, the underside of the maple cap is indeed still wavy underneath here. But here's how they wired it. Kind of looks like a big old mess of wires, thanks to our kill switch in here and having our toggle switch right there. This one has a nice flat back, great wood grain. Kind of reminds me of the hair of the dog Les Paul Studio. Satin finishes like these are, they just feel awesome on a guitar. There's a reason why players love these things because they just feel great. Now moving up the neck, you can tell somebody must have liked to play solo work because the finish has glossed up just a little bit right there. And there are a few light impressions back here, but the rest of the neck is actually pretty still flat finished. 
Moving up the back of our headstock, we can see our Black Grover tuners. This one was made in 2012. Now this run started in 2011, but as you can see, this is a very early 2012, January 11th. So I don't think this run lasted too long into 2012. Looks like we've got a small ding right there. And sadly, one right here on the body too. But this is one of those beggars can't be choosers. Good luck finding an absolutely dead mint BFG. I mean, this one was advertised to me as mint. <laughs> People's definitions don't always match mine, but I'm happy enough with it. All said and done, this one is seven and a half pounds, seven pounds, eight ounces. Let's go ahead, plug it in and get a tone sample. All right, so before we get too far in here, this guitar, it's really loud acoustically for an electric guitar, and I think that comes down to the chambered mahogany body on this. Sometimes Les Paul fans really look down upon chambered guitars, but I can really embrace it when it comes to a unique model that's, you know, kind of just all on its own, doing its own thing. I mean, listen to this thing. That's pretty loud for an electric and you feel it vibrating, not only in the body, but also in the neck. I just love this thing. That satin finish just lets this really vibrate. But anyways, this appears to have some grounding issues. Uh, it wouldn't surprise me if it left the factory that way. So we'll try to get the best demo that we can here. dig the clean tones out of this. The neck pickup definitely steals the show. But I really like the combination of the P90 and the humbucker together. It's extra funky. And that's why you play a BFG, because you get these interesting tones. I mean, that's extra glassy. Now the bridge can be very aggressive. And of course you got the kill switch here. Really only good for like on and on effects. You can't really do the whole bucket head kill switch stuff. Well, you might be able to, but it would take a lot of practice. Let's go ahead and kick on some dirt. Here's where you can really start to tell there's a grounding issue somewhere. Or shielding, maybe, would be better word for it.
gotta say, dig the tones out of this. I'm sure a more skilled player could get a lot of stuff out of this. I mean, that neck pickup is just so raunchy. <laughs> got that really woody tone to it. People would describe that as. Now that we know all about the Gibson BFG, what are my final thoughts on this thing? Now I remember why I like these things. Like it took a little bit of a refresher because they're a little bit strange. I know I like the Gator Green finish, but I'm just talking in general as a guitar, please. Do yourself a favor and try a BFG one day. Now that the first couple of runs are at least 10 years old now, they've got some age to them, I think people can finally start to appreciate these even more so than they did back then. They're just great guitars. Seriously, cannot recommend them enough. There's a reason why, you know, you see me keep $10,000 guitars and, you know, other crazy highly collectible things, and then you also see me keep stuff like this. I definitely want to find myself one of those ink blue ones for my own collection and, you know, just review and document because I think that's another one of the cooler finishes. Now, as far as like the Gary Moore one and the Zach Wilde, if I ever find one, sure. But personally, I just like the weird goofy colors because the B BFG top pulls that off well. So I like these things. I think you will too. If you like jazzy sounds, if you like hard rock, I mean, that's what these things are really made for. But this pickup combination is great. That's why it's fun to see like custom shop guitars also get these. And I always get excited like during rock or not episodes and stuff. I know Music Zoo likes to custom order things like this in a higher end format. So even though it's unfinished or barely finished, Gibson really knocked it out of the park. It is a cult classic, and I love these things. All right, troglodytes, I hope you enjoyed tonight's episode. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we will catch you tomorrow on the next one. Take care.